Hey pal, you just blowing from stupid town? Me, I'm even clever than the clever bruvs. Let's run away. Doing humans of the world, my name is Major McDonald's or Unobjectivable, and you're watching the series on how to improve at Enlisted. The first episode did so well, and I received lots of great feedback on it, so I thought I'd continue the series for you all today in this second episode, but with different factions, maps, and situations to explore. As before, this video will show gameplay of a high scoring game at the top of the leaderboard that I recently had. It was nothing special or particularly significant by my standards, but just an average game for me. Yet many things happened in it, which I believe will be good for new and pro players players alike to see and learn from in this video. But not only that, I will also be including a voiceover explaining what I am doing at every moment and why I am doing it. This should help you guys know what to learn and do in your games to improve your own performances, and also will allow you to gain XP quicker and then level up quicker. There will be some niche tips in here as well for experienced players, so it should include plenty for everyone. As always, I do not claim to be the world's best player, and I do sometimes not do things that I should do, because sometimes, well, I can't be bothered. But if that happens, I will mention it in this voiceover for you to understand. Also, bear in mind that this is just my playstyle. It's very aggressive, and I do not expect everyone to play exactly as I do. But you should always play around the objective points as much as possible. So as always, we'll begin here by just looking at what squads I'm using, what troops I'm using, and what I'm bringing on them. So the first squad in this tree is just my uh, rifleman troop type 3. God, I forgot which one these were for a second. And I haven't leveled these up completely. I've completed the entire campaign, but this is the only squad I have not leveled up properly. So basically, I've just put on... I have mostly M2 carbines on them because I was just testing out the gun in general. Some of them have large grenade pouches. Some of them have large backpacks. Some of them have just, you know, j just trying to test out different things, basically. It's my testing squad, you know. And I've also got a gunner on there with the Browning A2 version. My next squad, which is fully ranked, this one is an assault squad all with M1 Thompsons, not M1 A1s, purely because um, I kind of like the M1 version and I'm just still trying to test it out which one I prefer. Um, and I've also got a gunner in here with the Browning. They've all got little backpacks, or little large backpacks on them, uh, large ammo pouches for most of them, all the gunners and assaulters do. My bomber has large grenade pouches, just, you know, also fill these roll, basically give him more options in order to blow up tanks. I've also got a radio man here, M1 carbine, uh, sorry, M2 Carbine and M1 Garand, I, I read them in the same column. Um, all of them have pistols and axes as much as possible. All of them have explosion packs, at least one, and a med pack. The next squad is my Flamethrower squad, my Flamethrower 2s. I've got, I put the Assaulter that I unlocked for him at the top, but then the next two are just Flamethrowers. Um, decked out as much as possible with M2 Flamethrowers because he's a Flamethrower 2s. As I said, I completed this campaign, so I have the highest things. I've also got another version of the bomber here with the same large grenade pouch. M1 bazookas as well, I forgot to say. I just prefer those. I prefer those of the PS. They're just fun to use and they have great range. I've got an engineer in this one. I've also got um, two riflemen. Uh, two, I believe, or is that... Oh, that's two. Riflemen two. Oh, I keep getting so confused between what, what they look like. Um, they're just there as fillers, really. Then I've got my sniper squad. Uh, as well. Sniper M1 Garands on them all with large ammo pouches because the ammo runs out really quickly if you don't have it. Um, another bomber. I just love the M1 bazookas, man. That's why I just, that's why I have bombers on every squad. <laughs> I probably should have a, an engineer on this one, but instead I've got a radio operator um, as well. I've also got, I've also unlocked the fifth slot on this campaign. Um, so I've got the gunner squad and I realized that th this guy actually could have uh, leveled up and I, I didn't even like this perk because the perk that he got, the perks that he got were rubbish. Um, so yeah, I've got basically Browning, the latest version of the Brownings um, with large ammo pouches, another radio man, another bomber, and another engineer all with the same stuff. This one's got an anti-personnel mine um, and I've got a trooper type three at the bottom there. Um, then I've got my tanker squads, which I hardly use because I prefer using being infantry. It is the jumbo tank. So, yeah, it's the high, it's the best tank in the game for the Allies in the Normandy. So I recommend getting this one and using it if, if you unlock it. And I've got the P-47 as well. Um, basically the, the bombing uh, plane that's quite OP. And I realized this guy had a normal hand grenade on it. So I thought I'd just change it out for an explosion pack because I knew I had one. 
So yeah, that's pretty much um, what I have and what my guys have. Which we'll look for a game now then. So we've joined this match and it's Oma Destruction. And I don't really like destruction game modes, but I like the map Oma. I decided to start out with my engineer and I'll use my flame troopers as well because I love using flame troopers. And it, they will be good after I've used my engineer to build a rally point just to like clear out uh, buildings. That's kind of my thinking because I know um, this one starts in like a barracks building kind of thing um, just because I know the maps. So it'll be good to use a, a flamethrower inside one of those. So that's sort of my logic for picking flamethrower. Um, I try to build a bit of an engineer rally. It's a bit of quite a risky one, I won't lie. It's pretty much in the open. And as I'm building this, I see heads moving across this wall. So I have to stop um, building it because I saw he had a grenade in hand. So he just probably just blow me up and my rally point up if I built it. So I had to kind of shoot him. Got a few of them down because they're all like queuing up there for me. Got a few more. Had to reload a little bit first because I ran out of bullets. Problem with the M1 Grand is only got eight bullets in a mag. Instead, I resort to trying to throw an explosive pack, which hopefully should get a few kills. It does. Now I try to go back to finishing up my rally. Um, but you know, to be honest, I can't see too many people. I did see one head there, and I can see heads across heads across the river as well. Um, but they're not my concern. They're not going to shoot me. But, as soon as I finish this rally point, it turns out my team are actually quite good players because we are already mining the radio um, or whatever the destruction thing you have to blow up is. Uh, I see a tank and I don't really want to run into it. Um, now I decide I probably should. This is a stupid decision by me, completely stupid. I just love the bazooka, so I just wanted to be a bazooka. And I tried to hit him around the side, but I went around the wrong side. I should have gone, you know, around the other side where he wasn't looking, because he just blew me up and then just blew up my entire squad. So that was actually a big, big mistake by me. I wasn't really thinking. I just like using my bazookas. That's literally, <laughs> that's, that's literally the only explanation I've got for doing that. So don't do that, is my advice. Do not do that. Go around the side where the tank is not looking and blow it up with either the bazooka, the piat, whatever you've got. Um, and or it'll use an explosive pack. Uh, respawning on this other rally point on the other side, mostly because um, I noticed that my team were doing quite well on the other side. Turns out as soon as I spawned there, the, the, the radio uh, explosives were actually being diffused, and I can see it. You can see it now. The, the um, blue outline is going down and down, and it's being diffused. So I thought I just okay. Well, I might have made a mistake, but so I'll run into this one, realise that there's a ton of people sitting in this barracks and wish I had my flamethrowers back again. Gotta get as many of them as possible. I miss... I'm, I'm, my aiming was quite awful here. And then I realised all my squad mates are actually in the most awful position possible. And this radio is actually in a really, really bad position because it's outside and it's really annoying. And the guy in that house who killed my last guy is so annoying that I just had to focus him and kill him. I mean, I wouldn't have had to anyway, because otherwise he would just mowed me down as you were trying to mine this thing. Um, yeah, never fear, because the more people keep spawning here. So I decided to go on a bit of a journey, because I realised I'm never going to be able to actually mine, put the explosive on this thing, um, because there's so many angles they could just fire us at, and including the plane, which I didn't even think about. Um, so yeah, that one's in a really difficult position for uh, Normandy allies to attack. Um, bit of a shame, that one, so I think... We'll prioritize the other one, which is inside the house, which is why I respawn on the other side. Realize that there's a tank sitting there, not in the grey zone, luckily, so it's actually available for us to kill. Realize it's tracking me as I try to peek around that fence. It knows where I am, and it started moving backwards, you can hear it. Um, so then I realized, okay, well, I can't run out in the open to kill it, I have to go around a different way. <clears throat> Taking a long way, and arguably I could have done something different with my time. I could have ignored this tank and went straight for the objective. But I think that will be doing a disservice to my team because otherwise that tank will just keep mowing my teammates who spawn down. And you can, as you can see, I, well, I marked the tank and he's clearly not looking at me because he's still looking at the spawn, the rally point spawn that I initially came out of. So I thought I'd try and just blow it up. And I managed to get away. I'd, I, sometimes I mess up because I get a bit too close to the tank as I'm holding the explosive pack in my hand and diffusing it. Um, just kind of waiting for the fuse to go down so it's tank car just as quick but um, this time I was just enough. I might got a bit concussed but it doesn't really matter. Um, and as I run back to this point I realise that we've already actually mined it so I think I decided to hide behind this little wall and just mow down any well defenders that try to defuse that bomb. And I'm in a great position here because there's no one around me 
apart from the people coming from that direction. So I know I can just sit here and mow them down with a really awesome machine gun. We get that point, finally. It only took us about 150 tickets at the top, as you can see. Well, 137 tickets to be precise. Um, so now it's the next task is to go to the other one. And I realise I can't really get over that bridge because that's in the grey zone. As you can see by looking at the minimap. And I realise this is going to be an awful place to try and cross this across this river, so I have to try and clear the other side of it first, because otherwise we're never going to cross, and this guy's peeking his head around the corner, thinks he's pro, because he's, you know, he knows how to press Q and E on keyboard, I think it is, to look around corners, so I realise I'm not going to wait for him, I'm just jump in the river, just hope for the best, I realise that my other squad mates are never going to make it across that river, because they're too dumb, um, so that I just accept that they'll get mowed down. It doesn't really matter because this is the guy with the machine gun that I want to use. Back over to this point then that I had difficulty with last time. And I know it's too risky to just go out and try and mine it because every German here will just come and kill me. So I have to, I don't decide to mine it and I know there's a guy in that house from earlier. He's still there. So I'm going to go right behind him, get a few kills. Other people are just trying to sneak down there. This guy doesn't see me. I'm just, I've just got lucky enough I've got a bit more time. Didn't see the guy behind the car, that's for sure. But... Never mind, you got me. The idea was there, and I'm just going to go and do it again now, but I finally got my flamethrowers. So I'm going to use those to run around the side. Yeah, and I switched to my flamethrower immediately because I forgot that I put my assaulter first. Running with the axe, as always, because it's quicker to run, or just run with any melee weapon in your hand, it's just quicker to run. Look how quick I'm running here. I try and run as close to, like, uh, walls and buildings as possible. Realise this is a probably quite an awful position. That guy was still in the house there. Have to try and kill him, and the planes are coming as well, so I'm just concussed. I try to run around the corner to try and let my guy recover from the concussion that he's just suffered, because I've never hit anything if I just try and sit there and shoot them. No one's around here though, apart from one guy I do see. Um, but the guy in the house is really triggering me at this point because he killed me again. Um, so I'm just going to mow them everyone else down with a flamethrower. I realise I'm probably going to die being out in this open here, but maybe I won't. I think I can hear a rally point as well if you listen closely enough. And there is a rally point in there, but I did die to the guy. I don't know if he has... Oh, he didn't have spawn protection because he died anyway from the fire. This guy didn't see me because I was sneaking in, sneaking in the hedges. You know, no one can see you if you just run up with using the hedges. Uh, these guys were not looking carefully at all. I don't know what was happening there. I just used my axe, but then I realised I switched to my M1 Garand, which is a mistake because I forgot it didn't have any bullets in the magazine. I should have just carried on running with my melee weapon there. Um, so then I just cost myself another life, which is just another mistake on my part. You know, mistakes happen, um, but it's all part of the fun of the game. You know, I'm not trying too hard. But it's just probably good for you to note if you wanted to. So I go back to that house where I know the rally point is. More people keep coming out of it. Awful aiming from me there. But this is a prime pretty much angle to mow many of them down. I get three kills there. There's another guy coming out as I reload, luckily. My teammates deal with that. There's another guy in here. I get the rally point. Problem solved. And the tanker there also helps a lot. Um, but then they're coming over this fence anyway. They respawn in that house just beyond that that sort of fence. So, you know, it's not that much of an advantage that we just gained, but me delaying them like this um, should, should basically just help my team because I know they're competent because they were mining things earlier. They know to play around objectives so I just feel I don't need to go and mine it myself. As if, if I think I'm one of the better players on the team I need to go and protect my essentially protect my teammates by covering all the angles, killing everyone who will kill them because otherwise I know that no one else will do it. Which is why I'm going into this house looking in all the rooms. This guy doesn't see me so I just kill him quite easily. So I've covered that this entire house for my team. Uh, and I think I'm just going to try and camp in this house because I realise this is a great position. Like, all of the enemies will have to come through either well, one or the other side of the house. You can see more of them there, completely ignoring me. They don't know I'm in there. And this is a great position to just mow down. Oh, that was so satisfying. Come on, that was unbelievably satisfying. Just mow them all down. Look, there's so many of them. Bit of a risky move to jump out of the house here, but then I think... This could actually be prime position if I can just keep mowing them down. Anyone who tries to go to that point. Some of them are coming out of the house as well, but 
then someone comes up behind me and cleans me up. Should have stayed in the house to be honest, bit of another mistake. I was just getting a bit greedy for kills really, that's you know, it's part of the fun of the game. You don't always need to you know, be 100% as long as you're protecting. So yeah, as, you, as I said before, you know, in this game I haven't really gone for the point that much. I'm mostly going because I know from the start of the round that I've got a competent enough team. They know what they're doing. They know to go to the point and, and mine the thing, which you know, a large proportion of teams that I get matched with don't seem to know that. So if I do all the heavy work around the sides, my team can guard the immediate vicinity of the actual uh, objective. So that's kind of my thinking there. Um, and I realised that pretty much at this spawn there's a lot of people shooting me, they know I'm here. So most of my guys just get mowed down. The M2 Carbine is not a great weapon to have in this kind of position. Kind of unlucky that I got to spawn with this. Um, because long range is really difficult to hit them. At least I find it anyway. So I decided to just give up. <laughs> Even though I know there's guys over there. Figured if they come close to me. Uh, awful aiming for me. But if they come close to me then I have a much better chance. The M2 Carbine is devastating at a short range. Let's just look at that, you just it's basically an assault rifle. Keep mowing some more down. I can hear more beeping, so now there's a rally point somewhere in here. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what was happening there. I got caught on the door, the enemies also got caught on the door. and I couldn't turn my uh, view around quick enough to be confident enough that I was going to kill them, so I decided to go straight for the rally point. <laughs> and I got the rally point, um, but uh, none of the none of the actual um, AI around it. And this this respawn that we keep respawning at is a quite a good rally in actual fact, but the fact he's put so many uh, sandbags there is not a good idea. You do not want to put sandbags there because one, if you're the enemy and you see sandbags out the window, you know someone's just built that. And why would someone build that? Because they're trying to guard something which is usually going to be, you know, a rally point or something. So the enemies, if they have a brain, will know that there's a rally point there and then try and mow, mow us up and come and kill it. And that's what some of them were trying to do anyway. So I tried to get rid of as many of them as possible to prevent them from doing that because the rally point is useful where it is. You just shouldn't be so obvious where it is, really. You don't want to make it obvious because that would be tragic. But it looks like we might be able to get this radio point. No one is actually mining the thing. This guy was hiding in a bush, so somehow I missed him. Uh, trying to look around me again. Mo some more down, which I don't even know what they're doing. Some more people, and of course the guy's in the house again. That guy in the house is really pissing me off at this point. He's really getting to me, so after I kill this guy on this ledge, which I didn't notice before, I'm going to go and burn him to a crisp, because I hate him so much. It's the same guy sitting in that house. He knows he, he knows he can do that. He's, he's a smart player, I'll give him that, but it's so annoying, so I'll just burn him. Burn him alive, burn everyone alive, really. As much as I can until I fall, anyway. Then I get to my engineer. And I'm not entirely sure what to do here, so instead I'm just going to go and basically just ensure that that guy who was sitting in that house doesn't go back there again. Um, but he was there, and he was just hiding and trying to repair himself with a medkit. Didn't give him that pleasure. Outcast ZA. ZA. You know, he was annoying me all game, just sitting in this house, so... I'm gonna take that house for myself, really. And I can see some of my AI dying, and I didn't know why, so I came to peek back around the corner. Turns out, people were shooting me from outside. I could get a few of them mowed down at least, but there was a bit too many of them, and fairly accurate anyway. The AI are quite accurate. Or maybe it was a player, who knows. So, I'm my last guy, and I just decide, because I, I noticed that from the sound that there was someone on the point, on the rally diffusing it, on the, um, the radio diffusing it, so I turned around with my radio man and just burned him to a crisp. Um, I get a few more before I fall, because... Once again, Outcast ZA has come back into the house. Just sort of praying that I can just kill him again, because he will probably get a lot of kills just by sitting there. And once again, these sandbags are really annoying. Look, the AI really struggled to get around them, so that's why my advice is don't build them there as well. Because of the AI, and also because it just, you know, tells enemies, Hey look, there's something here that someone tried to protect, you know. That's why. This Evanik guy was quite good as well. He clearly knew what he was doing. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a bit of a challenge. 
You normally tell which players are the experienced players by um, the name decorators that they have now. If they've got one of those, they're usually half decent, and then obviously if you remember the ones, like, who got what for what in the Berlin um, events that they had recently, then you can probably figure out, like, ahead of time who's a good player. That's what I normally try and do when I join a game. Figure out who's good and who's not. Um, <clears throat> a bit too many enemies here for me to try and deal with. I think I'm losing my voice now. Talked so much, dude. But, um, yeah, mow a few more of them down. Try and sit in this house a bit more. I noticed there's a guy trying to kill a tank. I get him, but his explosion pack gets me. So next, it, well, pretty much um, pretty much up to this point, it's just a question of defending the radio that you've just defused as much as... on well, defused. Planted a bomb on as much as possible, but luckily that time for me is over, and I realised I didn't even see that there was so many people in this house. I do hear a rally point, though, which was my focus. I didn't see the guys up the stairs. Um, yeah. The next strategy is to just gradually push over there because I know people will be spawning and running into this like street thing, the main street on the inside of the map. I'm trying to walk into the bushes and walk inside the house to get around because I realise it's just too much in the open that street. So going around a different way to try and push forward to that next objective is the aim. Trying to run through the back rather than go through the front, so go around the well. This is the side, actually. If I'm being honest, and there's a guy here, but he. I was a bit confused whether there was a guy actually planting the thing, um, even though the the icon was indicating that he was planting it. He does manage to plant it. So my next aim, as before, is to just guard the area. And I know that this this house here, a lot of enemies come through just from playing the map in the past. So my idea is kind of just to d defend this house, and I heard someone go through windows here, um, so that's why I ran outside. Uh, doesn't matter though. For, for some reason, I'm able to to, to get up. I, I I even throw a grenade down as I was down, and I managed to get a kill with it, which is surprising because that's not what I thought would happen. Uh, so I go down, um, and the enemies are coming through that house as I expected and predicted. So the aim once again is just to try and protect it, but then I realise we don't actually have a rally point. So finally, I'm going to go and place another rally point. Um, my teammates have so far done quite good jobs of, of putting rally points down, so I haven't bothered. And my focus once again, as I said before, is just to you know do the dirty work, getting pretty much killing enemies before they get to the point, so that my teammates can deal with the point. I know that's probably the best chance we have of winning, just because of you know past experiences I guess. Put a rally point down in this house. Um, I realise oh, as soon as I put it down there it's a bit risky because this guy um, he just shot me as soon as I came out was coming in and he came into this house as well with two guys and luckily I was able to decide who I was switching to because the first guy I was switching to was glitched in the first house but luckily this this gunner here was able to react in time. So I'm back on to the point and I'm gonna go and plant some bombs on it. I'm looking at the door and I look at the door precisely because as soon as I see the door open it's it's like it gives you that split extra second of time um, to react and like to stop planting the bomb and to shoot them. It, it just It's just a good way because it, if the door was open and someone ran, run in, runs in they immediately see you on the point rather than you know them not knowing where you are because they have to open the door. I'm explaining that badly, but that's kind of why you want to shut the doors when you're doing the objective as you are. That was a bit greedy, running outside to try and kill those, but I'm trying to guard, uh, defend and guard the people on the point. And I run back in because I hear someone's defusing it. I don't know where he is. Uh, some guy dies behind the corner there, and what on earth is that guy doing? Is he planting a mortar? What on earth is he doing? I have literally no... Is he, is he okay? I have no idea. Some some guy who <laughs> clearly doesn't know what he was doing. So, um, yeah, that's unfortunate for him there. Uh, cleaning some more enemies up around the point. Realize there's no one in this house, and I think it's a decent enough vantage point. I'm stupid, and I run out of the house and die to artillery, and I realize that's where I was stuck from. 
so far away, I have to run now 112 meters or whatever it is, or yards. I don't even know. What if it is? Is it meters or yards? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's meters or yards, like the distance from here to the point. You can see it's going down. And for some reason, there's a tank here, which I have no idea what it's even doing, so I decide to go and explode it. Sadly, that actually does not kill it. It just sets. Well, it does, it does enough damage that it sets it on fire, so I think yeah, that's good enough. I'll let them explode, really. And I can hear the tank eventually did explode. I got no credit for it, sadly, which probably means that someone else blew it up properly, other than I did. Which is a shame. But yeah, I mean, that's normally where you want to do with the explosive pack anyway. Just like, you know, down below on the side of it. Normally that, that does well enough. Or at least immobilizes the tank, it disables the wheels. But as I was running in to the point there, some guy behind us. I must have not looked carefully enough uh, before I was running into that. Then I realized I need to build another rally point because the rally point that I tried to build has already been gone because of that first guy who tried to walk in the house. As soon as like an enemy knows a rally point's there, he's going to keep coming for it. That's why it's a problem. Um, and that's why you pretty much always should... Um, you know, put rally points in places like that guy. I was outcast again. Outcast ZA. He was the one who got my rally point. So I'm gonna go and build a rally point in a different place this time. And I decided to go and build it in this in this house next door. Hopefully he doesn't hear it if he goes into the same house, but he shouldn't go to the same house now because you know he's already got the rally point. I'm trying to find a good angle for this rally point here. I realise as soon as I start building this, that this probably isn't the best because well it's open. <laughs> it's open like so if enemies just walking around in this like, general sort of courtyard area, they'd be able to see it, but they probably wouldn't come here. There's no reason for the enemies to come here, so it's actually quite a decent uh, place to go. I hear a guy once again somewhere around, and I can't figure out where on earth he is, so I'm going to go and shoot enemies that are spawning in that house. And that's at the point at which I realise maybe this rally point is not in a great area, because... It basically means there's going to be conflict between the respawning enemies and those people spawning on that rally points, but maybe it'll do the job because it's close enough. And if people keep spawning on it, we'll be fine. Because we have better players, I think. Kind of lucky in that respect. Better players always help. <laughs> so it's a bit of a lucky rally point place. I probably could have placed it in a better place and... Yeah, trying to look all around me before running through this little courtyard. And I can hear an enemy. And he's mowing down my rest of the squad, as you can see in the bottom right, bottom left hand corner. Put some artillery down. More of my guys are being knocked down. I know there's a guy up here, but one of my teammates has got there first. So, thank you, teammate. He does well enough. Um, and I, I, yeah, I couldn't leave that guy just sitting in the house because he would just keep mowing down um, basically all, all my allies. So I had to go and kill him. Get on to the point. This guy, I don't know what he was doing. Uh, three kills, really. Uh, this guy, for some reason, takes a while to kill because of the stupid tires in the way. I closed that door, as I said before. Because um, someone else was planting the bomb, and it just gives anyone in the other side of the door like that extra split second to react. Now it's just a question of guarding the thing again, trying to do as much as possible. I keep changing positions just because an angle is just to try and see where the enemies are coming from. I realise this place is a good angle to come from. It's a bit risky uh, trying to lie down on the ground here, um, but it's better for recoil. But you know, basically. Anyone with a brain can probably shoot me. Uh, luckily, they didn't seem to have a brain, so... But it was Outcast ZA, and he does have a brain. He definitely has a brain, so... Got a bit lucky. That's for sure. Just a question of more guarding. Keep changing, keep chopping and churning. You know, don't just look at the same place for minutes on end. You know, keep switching, look at different places is always the best, so you can equally you know, cover every area. I do well enough at that that... It, the, uh, the explosives do go off here. Getting okay, a few more free kills. So yeah, always defend your teammates placing, if you're playing on destruction, placing the radio as much as possible. Close doors on them, so they have more time to react. And just guard them as best as you can. Keep looking everywhere around where any enemies could possibly come from. Yeah, th this, this door's always an issue. I seem to always die when I'm coming out of that door. Um, but yeah, the, the last um, radio point in this map, you can see it as you respawn, obviously, it's just one. Um, and it's on the other side of the river, so I deselect the spawn I was by default spawning at and spawning the one on the other side of the um, river because I don't want to have to run across bridges, you're just too open like that, you'd probably just waste a squad. So, 
Yeah, and I can hear more beeping. I can hear it from quite a far away, so I knew there was one here anyway. Um, for some reason there were just some guys <laughs> sitting there. Well, sitting, actually going prone. I know there's people still up here. I get one. And there's two rally points up here for some reason, but it doesn't really matter because I get them both. Bit of a weird place to have a rally, but that's probably from the other points that we previously had to get. Just no one cleared it up. But you do have to get those kind of things, otherwise they can be so annoying and they'll just... They'll kill you when you don't expect it, so then you just waste tickets because you didn't realise they were there. So you do have to get those, if you can, anyway. This is a tank. I tried to mark it, I miss, but never fear because I got the other guy. <laughs> and as because of the tank, I realised I should probably change to my bombers. Um, I decided not to risk the bazooka this time. <laughs> And I'm just going to go and destroy this tank, even though it's it's not even defending its own point. It's like it's in a really bad place. But I realised that if I die, I'll probably keep dying to this tank because it's in a place to you know spawn kill us. So I had to go and get it. Probably the smart strategy too. That guy I almost didn't see because it's so dark in this room. Try to finish up def putting bombs onto this radio. It takes too long, I think this, but. Just my opinion. This guy, whew, that kind of made me jump as well. You know, didn't didn't see him. He was just trying to defuse it in front of me. You know, who knows? And this guy, I don't know why he, this guy wasn't shooting me. But, hey ho, another tank. Free real estate, free points. Because he's not looking at me. I know that will kill. Yeah, it kills the tank because it's perfect hit really, and he's got no time to react because you hold the fuse for so long. So that's why you should always do that because the tank has no time to react. And you should always blow up a tank if he's near you, and you know he's not looking at you. That's the perfect place to to, to kill a tank. And you always should. And they'll keep seem to coming from this same. The enemies keep coming from the same place. So I'm just going to keep mowing them down. And there's a guy who killed me, and I have no idea where he was because he didn't really get marks on the map. Um, then I realise, hold on a second, he's inside the house in the, one of the windows. This is a risky play, I shouldn't be doing this really. But I did actually get him, funnily enough, as one of the last kills of the game, and that's that's that. So that's really all it takes, just keep guarding your, your friends until they place the mines on. But that's only if you've got competent teammates. And I realise <laughs> as soon as after I, I complete this that there's another making a list at a better place. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I'd I take a minute to, to read this um, before the, the stats show. So finally, after reading that updates patch, uh, I'm going to show the stats. Get five uh, bronze weapon orders, 11 bronze silver, uh, 11 bronze silver, 11 bronze uh, troop orders, and one of each of the silver orders as well. A lot of my guys, my, my squads are max level, but uh, my individual troops are also leveling up here. I got 171 kills in total, 39 assists, three vehicle kills, seven engineer points, um, engineer structure points things. I didn't build very many rally points, so of course I didn't really need to, but realistically you should always have more than one engineer score because if you don't then you're just you're just asking to lose games. Anyway, this SKH902 guy, he did very well. Um, so I'm quite pleased to have him on my team. Especially the way it was, it was two good players against two good players, Evernick and Outcast ZA against myself and SKH902. So kinda glad that I was the better <laughs> I was the one of the better ones. It kind of always balances out that way. You've got two fantastic, two good players on, on both teams, then it's just kind of whoever are the better ones, which is the point. Uh, I don't know what I'm saying here. It's just, you know, it's a good thing. <laughs> That though is going to wrap up this video and I hope it has helped you all, you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. If you did, then slap a like on this video and of course subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. I really appreciate the love that the series has received so far and if you guys want me to continue it then leaving a comment and a like on the video lets me know that you do. In the future I'll probably add some extra edits on these videos to try and make them a bit more engaging but I think the raw commentary actually helps people and I think they seem to enjoy it so if I'm wrong let me know, if I'm right then let me know as well. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you today. Have a wonderful day, enjoy yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. The life of dreams is moving fast.